Alright, so in this tutorial view, I'm just going to show you some displacement, or not displacement, but um, material placement that you usually wouldn't go around doing it. And I already built the terrain, uh, so I'm just going to go through the settings that I did to get what I have. So I'm just going to show you the scene that I have so far. Um, I'm just going to click OK on this, and I'll render a preview for it. And this is the scene that I made. It's just a mountain using a terrain fractal. Uh, and this is actually snow with rock mixed in with it. And these are conifer trees growing. So um, I'll show you what I did to get this scene. Okay, first what I did is I made a procedural terrain just by opening up procedural terrain. And I formed it using using this terrain fractal and you can see the settings here I use a ridge mix and I blended it towards the ridge more and this is what I came up with and I also used a filter on it and it's just a quick filter one node in the middle um, and I curved it and I brought this down so it's basically the same thing that Claude Spinner used on one of his tutorials but um, I didn't know that until I watched the tutorial, so I'm kind of glad I did because now I know I'm starting to think like somebody who knows what they're doing almost. So I'll click OK. So after I did that, I made that filter. Um, I got this little mountain range that I made here. Uh, and it's really quite tiny, and I just clipped it so I don't have those borders, the box. And right here could possibly be like a lake, but uh, we're not going to get into that right now. So this is the terrain I have and then I threw in uh, the custom dependency with the output node so you just click anywhere else uh, you click the output node and you click custom dependency and then you link it to here normally this would be a blue circle um, but it's not now because I already have one linked there but you can rename this put a title in here you can call it roughness and now it is called roughness and you just link it like I said do that one right there and you that's all you do create your terrain make it how you want it the in the output node custom dependency click anywhere create a custom dependency link it to your terrain fractal or whichever fractal you use or whichever one you want to apply the material to rename it whatever you want you don't even have to name it if you don't want but it's best if you do and click OK and I'll render out your scene probably should just click cancel but now I have my mountain here, or my mountain range, and that's what we have. Next, what you want to do is go into the material editor here, and you want to start with just your default material, um, or whichever material you want, but your base material. And um, if you are going to use snow, you typically want a, a darker material so you can see the snow better uh, while you're mixing it in. So this was actually a uh, custom material or a default material so this was the only one I had next you're gonna want to create a new layer which will bring up snow so these were the, the only two that I had so was that that was my first one create a new layer I put in the snow and I went to transparency enabled global transparency all the way and you know what I could probably even change that now down to about 40% maybe even more the snow won't be so transparent but um, basically 100% enable variable transparency come to the edit function or edit the function right there right click on that come in here this external dependency is your input node right here the top one you click anywhere on here click on that it'll be the top one external dependency you want to link the dependency right here to your procedural terrain to the output node that you called roughness so now it's dependent on the roughness and then transparency right here if I just unlink this for a second you'll be able to link it right here and as you can see my material my snow material went completely away now it's just rock there's no snow just rock and that's what you do 
and then there you now have a material that you can mix only to the rough areas of the terrain. I'm going to delete that, delete that, and I'm going to link this back. And as you can see, I have my snow back. And I'm going to play with these just a slight bit more. Just till I get something I really like. Oh, I'll just keep them the same. All right, well, I'll just keep them the same. And then in here, after you get that, um, you, I'm going to show you these. You can put filters on them. Uh, this is a brightness and contrast filter that I put on because, or you can do this. You can go here, put on a filter, come to just the regular filter, edit this, put a node right here in between that and in between this, and just pull them closer together. It doesn't really matter where you place them actually, but um, as long as you get the, co the contrast and the brightness, this is what I'm basically doing. Brightness, contrast and that's what you can do instead of using the brightness and contrast node there and any of these uh, offset works you can multiply uh, you can do any of these any of these that you want just know that you're gonna get some weird looking terrains or weird material placement on certain nodes so we'll see what this one looks like because this one actually gave me a better look than what I had. See like the snow now is on the rougher areas on the slopes now. Up here it's not as much. So bias was pretty good. Now we have snow everywhere. So this is with the uh, transparency placement right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and render a final render of this. And we'll see what this looks like. So this is with the transparency material placement and I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, render out one where it's just a mixed material now and I'll show you side by side of what they look like and I'll just walk, you can, I'll just do it and walk you through, it took about two minutes to render um, we'll just go and edit the material and we'll go to snow and we'll just delete that and inside the gray mountain we'll just mix a material with it bring in snow and we will bring the distribution like this and now we will distribute it on all of these axes right here or the second material the snow material will appear at high altitudes on flat surfaces so this is pretty strong right here then we'll just bring this down so it only hits the areas that we want it to. And that right there looking good. I always forget to go to cover. Um, so we're going to have to go and bring this down even more. You want snow to cover. Not just blend. You want it to cover. Alright, and we'll just bring in a smoothing strip here even though you don't have to with snow and um, that's about what we had before the same amount of the terrain that was covered with snow is about right here we'll click OK and now we'll render a final preview or a final version of this alright so this is the difference between the two they, put, they both took about two minutes to render this one took slightly longer um, as you can see right here we still have rocks showing up in the areas that are kind of flat and not so rough um, right here it's just completely covered uh, there are some areas right here and right here that you don't see that are covered with snow whereas right here they're covered with snow but we also have a little more of that rock detail showing in um, down here we still have snow going to about right here uh, down into this area and then over around this ridge down here we have snow going around this area down to he down to like about right here and then over here so this is actually going further down um, than this but uh, either way you're gonna get a pretty good mix between the, the materials uh, I like doing it this way with the transparency displace or displacement or whatever you want to call it uh, this is I like doing it this way because uh, you get a more natural look. You know, the snow gradually fades away. It just doesn't stop and then 
go. I mean, snow does stop and then it doesn't fade, but um, like areas like this where you can see snow going into the into the forest and have it fade away down into there, like it's melting away and just thinning out towards the top, it makes it look really cool. Um, this way definitely is a good way to do it too. You just don't have all that nice rock detail like you do over in here. Uh, but they're both good ways. I'm not telling you which way to do it, which way not to do it, but uh, I definitely do prefer this way more. So um, if you guys have any questions, if you think I went over this too fast, go ahead and please uh, rate and comment. Or you don't even have to rate, but just comment and I can go through it. I just need to keep it 10 minutes le or shorter for YouTube purposes. I wish I can go on for like another 10 or 10 or 50 minutes on, on how to do this. Um, but just ask questions and I'm pretty sure if you ask them, I can probably answer them for you. Uh, depending on you know the the skill or the um, the actual question you're talk you're trying to ask so uh, but either way both these are good you'll both get good results so yeah please rate and comment uh, subscribe if you can and uh, there'll be more tutorials to come probably ones that are more in depth thank you.